Hey everyone, Adam here and today I want to share with you my experience with Logic Remote for iOS. So I have an iPad for my day job and I knew there was an app for Logic. I just never used it and I totally forgot about it. So I fixed that, I downloaded the app and I've been using it for some time and I must say that I quite like it. The thing about software such as Logic is that there's a bunch of key commands, bunch of shortcuts that you want to use to be more effective. But that often means that you need to press a combination of multiple buttons and there's a lot of combinations. And so you need to remember all of them and you need to develop the muscle memory to be able to do it without even thinking about it. And that takes a lot of work, a lot of time. That might be one of the reasons why would you buy a door controller. They have a bunch of buttons, faders and knobs and you can assign actions to them. You can map your door to it. The problem is they can be very expensive and the integration with the door that you are using uh, might be not that good. And even if it is, it might break with any software or firmware update. So I think that using app like this is a quite nice alternative. It didn't cost me anything because I already had the iPad. And yeah, as I mentioned, I quite like it. So let me show you how it works. Okay, I won't go that much into detail in this video, but here, as you can see, we have a bunch of views that we can choose from. Right now, I'm in the smart controls and keyboard. So for example, if you have a MIDI track, you can use this as your MIDI controller. There are live loops, step sequencer, but for me, the most important ones would be the mixer and key commands. You have seen the mixer in the intro of this video, and I think that compared to a mouse, using a touch interface like this is much better experience. It's much more tactile to control these faders and knobs. This way I can easily mute the tracks just by tapping or soloing the tracks. So yeah, it's much more tactile, much nicer, which I think is very important especially when I'm tracking the guitars and uh, I have a guitar pick in my hand. So that way I don't need to switch between that and the mouse. And it can be used for mixing as well. Now let's switch to the key commands. And here we have a pad with a bunch of buttons, the big buttons that are easy to tap and Basically, you can assign any action to any button. So if I go here to the edit key commands and I tap on this one, I can choose from category and there's loads and loads of actions that you can pick. You can assign a color to it and it's definitely easier to control logic with buttons like this instead of remembering all, all the key commands uh, or the shortcut combinations in your hand. Each button just says what it does and you tap it very easily. Again, much better experience, especially when recording the guitars. You are not starting with an empty page. There's actually many pages, all pre-filled with buttons ready to be used so you can even get it inspired. At the bottom there are transport buttons and this will be a really nice interface for guitar recording as well. So yeah, that's the Logic Remote for iOS. I'm not rejecting the idea of use of DAW controllers. I might invest in one myself in the future, but since I already have an iPad, might as well improve my workflow with what I have right now. That's all for today. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. It helps a lot. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow me on my journey. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.